This video was made possible by Woodchip Woodworking. Hello YouTube and welcome to the premiere episode of an eight part series focusing on the mini lathe. Today I'm going to introduce you to the tool and the basic setup required for the tool. What you'll need for this video is, as always, safety gear. Now remember, if you're using a larger lathe, you want to be using a full face shield instead of just goggles. Okay? You also need the basic parts for your lathe, so a tail stock and a life center. You will need a knockout rod. You will need a tri-square, a decently sharp pencil, and the workpiece that you're going to mount. Right here I just have a basic piece of dug fur. Now, before we get started, let's cover the basic parts of the lathe. Before we do anything, we put on our safety gear as we always do whenever we approach a tool. There's three main parts to the lathe. There's the headstock, which powers your workpiece. There's the bed, which the banjo here and the tailstock here rest on. And then there's the one I just mentioned is the tailstock. This allows you to press inwards and keep your workpiece mounted and spinning concentric. You notice there's this little control panel down here. This has the on-off switch, with all, which all lathes have. It also has a variable speed control. This will change the amount of power being given to the workpiece, which will change the speed that it rotates. Not all lathes have this. Some lathes, you just change the order of the belt, which I'll go over later, and that's how you will change the speed. Next, we have the parts to the lathe, the accessories. Mounted on here, I have a faceplate which simply screws on to the headstock like this. We will cover this much later, but it's a very useful device for mounting a workpiece without using the tailstock. We have the spur. The spur is used in conjunction with the tailstock in order to mount pieces in a spindle setup, which is what we're going to be going over in this video and the next video. Knockout rod, pretty basic, it's a piece of me uh, metal, sorry, that will slide into your tailstock, or sorry, slide into your headstock and allow you to knock out the spindle when it's put in. We have the live center. Now, live center is interesting. There's both the live center and the dead center. The live center, as you can see, spins. It rotates with the wood when it's on your lathe. Dead centers, however, don't rotate. Now, the live center was invented because the dead centers damage part of your wood and make it unusable. Your live center simply fits into your tailstock. All right? Okay, now let's work on actually mounting the workpiece and getting it ready. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take our tri-square, and hopefully your workpiece is a square, if it's round, there's another technique, you can use a center finder. But pretty much the idea is to find the exact center. So what we're going to do, is we're going to put our piece of wood down, take our pencil, and we're going to draw 45 degree lines from each side to find the exact center. like such. We're going to do that on both sides. Now if you want to, you don't need to, you can use a multi-square and just use the 45 degree section of that, but I find it just more complicated and, and just really it's unnecessary. Now, for this part, we will not need the faceplate, so you can just put that off to the side. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to take our spur and we are going to hammer it in. You don't necessarily need to hammer it in, but I find that it provides better connection. So you put the tip, the very tip of the spur, right on your center mark and just tap it in. Now, 
notice that some woodworkers don't like actually be hammering it in because they say that it mushrooms out or expands the end of your spur. I don't find this to be true. If you do have a mushroom spur, just take it over to a grinder and just grind down the edges a little bit. It's all you need to do. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we are going to slide it into the headstock firmly. All right. From here, we extend the spindle of the tail sock and slide our live center in. Unlock our tail stock, which is done by this back lever here, goes down. As we push it in and we match it straight up with the center of the piece of wood. Push in, lock in. It's locked. This is now locked, but if you'll notice, there's this other knob here and this spindle still moves. So what we're going to do is spin the uh, knob or move the spindle into the wood and then use this little knob here, this lever here, to lock it in. Okay, your workpiece is now mounted. If you spin this lever here on the side of your headstock, the piece rotates. Okay, so our headstock is set up. Our tailstock is set up. Now we need to move the banjo, which is the piece holding the tool rest and the tool rest itself into place. First thing we're going to do is unlock the banjo. Move my touch guard away so the camera can catch this. We move it into the center of the piece of wood so there's a bit of overhang on both sides. Now notice, if your piece of wood is the maximum extent of your, of your lathe, you put, you always want overhang on either the starting or the ending piece. So in the middle, if this was longer, you don't need overhang. You can put your tool rest directly in the middle. But if you're starting on an edge, you want overhang. I'll explain why later. Just for now, you want overhang on both sides. Next, what we're going to do is return our piece of wood flat, and we want to raise our tool rest so that when we put our lathe tool on our tool rest, the tip of the tool will be one eighth of an inch higher than the centermost line of the wood. This allows us to not throw the tool when we're turning. Because if we are level with the wood or with the center of the wood and our tool catches, our tool will flip and fly, which is bad because it could hit someone, it could damage another tool, it could damage your lathe tool or your lathe and it will damage your workpiece. So you definitely want to make sure it's an eighth of an inch higher than the center line. Remember, before you even turn on your lathe, you always spin it by hand for exactly this reason. If it hits and your lathe power is turned on and you're not turning it by hand, it can damage your motor and cause you to either buy a new lathe or have to buy a new motor. So since this hits, all we do is we don't move the tool rest, we just move the banjo out a little tiny bit so it will clear. See how I can spin this freely? That's exactly what you want. Okay, right now let's talk about the variable speed function of the lathe. Now there's two ways you can adjust the speed. On this lathe, it combines both two ways. On some way, it only has one way. It only has one way. First way, and the easiest way to do it on this machine is simply turn this knob right here. Okay. I prefer the variable speed because it allows quicker changes between either basic roughing to all the way to sanding. Now, the other way to do it is to change the belt configuration. And I apologize for the shaky camera, but the tripod won't fit. If you change the belt configuration, all you have to do is unscrew a knob or some sort of lever on your lathe that enables you to open 
two access panels. There's one in here. If you can see it. See, those are gears here and the belts right here. Now, you what you do is you change the belt between these three gears and that will change your speed manually. Now there's a lower panel generally behind your power supply that will also allow you to change the belts. Okay? And this is also where your motor connects to your belts. Now, in order to change these belts, what you need to do is you first lower your motor. And that operation is done with these two knobs right here. So first what you're going to do is this white knob is the one that actually lowers your motor, so you need to loosen it. So use this black knob to loosen it until this white knob, white knob sorry, will move up and down. You move it up and then you will reach behind and release your belt and same deal on the top panel. You'll change your belt configuration and you'll retighten the knob. You always make sure that this knob is tight when the lathe is running. If it's not, your belt can break and your motor can break and your piece... Actually, I don't think it will damage your piece of wood, but belts are expensive and hard to come by, especially for grizzly lathe. Okay, the quick setup portion of this video is now done. If you want, you can go start up your lathes. Let's talk a little about safety though. When you're using your lathe, you want to always make sure that you're safe and aware of what you're doing. Never use your lathe if you're intoxicated or under the influence of whatever. You always want to be clear-headed and fully present when you're using this. If you're tired, sleepy, just don't use your lathe. Just come back tomorrow, use it then. All right. I suppose the most important thing on safety would be the location of your tool rest. If your tool rest is way out here and you put your tool in, you need to angle your tool down to cut. That will throw your tool. If your tool rest is too low, you can angle it up, but this portion here extending over the tool rest itself can bend in some cases. Actually, let me go see if I can find an example of this. Okay, here we are. If you notice, this is bent slightly at the end here. That was from someone doing this type of operation. The workpiece was stronger than the metal supporting it, so it bent it. Okay? Now this is high speed steel. This is not weak steel. This is very strong. So it takes a lot of force to be able to bend something like this. The next safety concern you're going to have is generally you don't want to have long baggy clothing and you don't want to have long hair around using the leg. I'm sure you can imagine, say, it's the same thing as a drill press, I'm sure you can imagine hair or strings from hoodies or something like that getting caught in this workpiece and it pulling you in and choking you. Now this takes maybe 30 seconds to happen for you to pass out. It takes maybe 3 seconds for it to choke you to the point where you can't do anything. You can't get to a phone. You can't stop it, really. It's very... It seems kind of like your grandma. Okay? It's not intimidating. I mean, oh, sure, yeah, it's just something spinning. But you always want to teach it, or al sorry, always want to approach the lathe with a certain degree of respect and caution. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe. Post any question at all in the comments. I will get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you have fun using your lathe and you look at the rest of the videos.